button, um, just turn off your camera and then you're all good. All right, so now I'm getting started. Hi, I'm Danny Falter. I'm one of the local team leaders here in Bayside area in Melbourne. And um, at the moment we can't go out, but good news is you can come into our kitchens and that's where you are today. So here um, is Hyatt, beautiful Hyatt, sunshine outside at the moment, but we have set up five different kitchens and five different presenters for you in total. And uh, this means, um, yeah, we, we're going around in circle and take you just with us. And uh, we're gonna spend the next one to one and a half hour, depends on how long um, I'm talking. <laughs> and uh, the steaming or the cooking time, obviously, takes a little bit longer, but we have packed this session with a lot of information all around the Varoma for you. And um, before we get started, my first question to you, and I want you to use the chat box in the Zoom session here. Um, show of hands, or because I can't see you, just type in who out here today has never used the Varoma before. Type in me, or yes, me, or hands up, it's just something, type it in the chat box and let me know who has never used the Varoma. Oh, I see a me coming there. Great. You, yes, you came to the right spot. <laughs> Never or hardly or just not confident, just don't know what to do with it. We've delivered it to you and it went straight into the cupboard and you've never taken it out because when you see a recipe on Cookie Do, it says use the aroma, you just go, nah, nah, shoot, I'd, I'd rather pick something else. Fantastic. Thanks so much for your feedback. Great, great outing time for you today. <laughs> came to the right place. So my aim is for you to walk away today from this um, cooking experience with us that you feel less intimidated, that you rather fall in love with this beautiful tool because the Varoma has so much in place for you and it would be really a complete waste if you're not using it. So steaming, um, Steaming your food is actually one of the healthiest way to prepare your food. It preserves the fiber, the color, and the flavor of vegetables because nothing is being touched, you know, nothing is being stirred and, and broken up. It also retains the vitamins and the minerals in your food. And it's actually also the best option if you are after some weight loss. Other benefits of using your Varoma well, you're already in love with your thermic so as well, I know, <laughs> is you can also, using your aroma, increasing the food. So very important for large families, you reduce the cooking time because you are creating all in one layers or multiple layers meals. This means you do a couple of steps in one go. So you're saving time by cooking. You're absolutely widening your, your cooking repertoire as I said, finding a recipe says Varoma and you walked away from it so far, I got it, we are gonna change that. And um, there will be another, a couple of other things I'm gonna show you. Um, for example, you can use it as a sterilizer, not only for baby bottles, but also when you're um, sterilizing your uh, jars for jams or yogurt, stuff like that. And you can also use it as a strainer. <laughs> So we're going to use it as a straight edge colander today. And uh, I have uh, a couple of surprises in there for you. All right. So let's get started straight away. And as I always say, last short, let's start with the dessert. <laughs> and we're heading over to Tracy's kitchen first. And I have a beautiful team in the background, Sandy, that you, you most of you probably know, is uh, managing the spotlighting for us today. So you could, should always see the speaker. Now we can see Tracy, big screen, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. So um, Sandy and Megan are managing the chat for you today and uh, the spotlighting and the muting and unmuting, blah, 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 every, all the technical stuff. And Tracy, we're going to start with you and you are going to show us the sticky, toughy, blah, 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 sticky toffee 
puddings. Is that yes, right? I, yeah, it's one of my favourite desserts. I've cooked this many times. Um, but I'm going to show you I've pre-prepared the dates and soaked them in boiling water mm -hmm. with a little bit of um, bicarb soda. So they've been soaking for about 20 minutes. And I'm going to start on the sauce. So... Starting with the sauce step, it's, I've teared my scales mm -hmm. and it's asking me to put 60 grams of butter in. What's that green thing we see there? Oh, <laughs> the, that green thing that you see is some little cups that you get. You can get them from the mix shop. I oh, know. I was I was referring to that green pencil that's lying there oh, on the top of your. <laughs> this is my stylus, my handy little stylus. I thought you meant the stylus, Jen. Yeah, yeah so it wasn't green. <laughs> sometimes my hands are messy. I like to use the stylus to touch the screen, so the screen doesn't get all dirty. Okay. Tracy, um, Tracy, we need to yes. we need to put your camera the angle a little bit further down because it, yes, perfect. Now we perfect. can see your side of the screen. Thank you. Okay, so I've put my butter in, press the next step. I need to add 60 grams of soft brown sugar. Mm -hmm. That's that. 75 grams of golden syrup. Now, this is bought golden syrup, but I actually have made my own golden syrup in the Thermomix before, and it was amazing and very easy. Mm. Great. So this is a this 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 and every other recipe that we're cooking here today is available on Cookie Do. And this is called sticky toffee pudding. And I know either Megan or, or Sandy are going to pop the link to the recipe into the chat box for you. It's 40 grams of milk. Yep. And some vanilla extract, quarter of a teaspoon. Nice, love vanilla. Put the lid on. And speed two. So it's going to actually cook that for seven minutes on 100 degrees mm -hmm. speed two. Okay, perfect. So it's like a, a caramel sauce you're making there first. Yes, and when it's finished, you put it in the fridge and it thickens it up. Oh, nice. Yummy. Okay, fantastic. So thanks so much, Tracy. We are going to leave you for now and we are going to head to Michelle's kitchen and Michelle is going to start with um, showing us the meatballs with tomato sauce. So um, whilst uh, <laughs> we're still managing changing over to the next kitchen, um, let me just quickly let you know, so when you're searching for meatballs in tomato sauce or meatballs with tomato sauce, there's about three recipes available on Cookie Do. And in this case, um, Sandy, can we just, can you have a look if you can spotlight to Michelle's kitchen? <laughs> We're still with Tracy. No, it's, it's showing uh, Michelle's spotlighted. I'll yeah, now she's yeah, now I can see her too. Wonderful. Okay, so um, yeah, just as a heads up, when you go and cook your and searching for the meatballs, there's two versions that are slow cooked meatballs in tomato sauce using the blade cover. And today we're going to use the the the, the classic version. It's a TM5 recipe, and this version actually steams the meatballs. So over to you, Michelle. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my kitchen. So really excited to be showing you this great dish. It's really easy um, for your weeknight dinners, or you can spice it up a little bit for the weekend. So my version um, today has a little bit of chilli, so hopefully you like chilli, um, but we will show you the recipe as we go along. Nothing's wrong with a little bit of chilli. <laughs> So this standard recipe actually uses fresh bread or stale bread, but I actually like to do it a little bit differently and use panko breadcrumbs. So I'm just gonna skip the first few steps because we don't need to worry about that today. So 
The next step is to add some sprigs of parsley, which I've got in front of me. So it says six to 12 sprigs. So really up to you what you like per, as per your tastes. You can actually use different herbs depending on what you have in your garden or what you have in the fridge or freezer. And you can even use dried herbs. So depending on what you like. So it's about yeah. a generous handful going in. I always like to say, uh, it's to taste. <laughs> yeah, it's to taste. And um, again, to taste, depending on what you like, I'm using one, oh, sorry, two garlic cloves. The recipe says one or optional. So again, up to you. I take five. <laughs> I do like my garlic. <laughs> All right, and now we're just going to um, blitz that. All right, so I'll, have, I'll show you what that looks like. There you go. Oh, wow. Does a great job. That was five seconds as well. Um, so it smells beautiful, nice and fresh. It okay. still amazes me after all these years, me doing and seeing that, how quickly it chops up um, really the tiniest bits and pieces inside the, um, inside the bowl yeah, in absolutely it, no time. And we have a lot of Thermomix recipes as well where you blitz the herbs or your garlic and then you just add the next ingredient, which is great. So you don't need to remove the ingredients um, and you can just add the next ingredient, which we're about to do. So we're using beef mints. Um, the recipe says 400 grams, but the packet was 500. So I'm going to use the 500 grams. Um, again, yeah. this is up to you how much fat content you want to um, have in your beef. Um, you can actually mince your own beef as well, if you didn't know that. You just use beef that um, is semi-frozen and then uh, it's usually diced or dice it before you freeze it and then you pop it in your Thermomix and yeah, within a few sort of like less than a minute, really, you've got mince. Um, it's really great as well if you've run out of mince, then you can just um, have semi-frozen beef chunks, either gravy beef or chuck steak, I think work quite well as well. And again, you're you know eliminating your preservatives, um, colours, additives, which is really good if you care about that. Um, and also you can modify the fat content as well yourself. So that's a little handy tip for you. That's really helpful to know. And um, as you, uh, you probably um, just wanna point out that the resources to find these information is in the back of your basic cookbook. So if, you, um, if you're having a TM5, you've got the green one, then uh, it will be in the beginning before the actual uh, recipes are starting. So all the basics about chopping and steaming and, and all that will be in the beginning before the book starts. And in, if you got the TM6 and the white book, it's at the end where it says resources. Great, thanks Jenny. So we're gonna add two eggs now. So I'm just gonna pop that in. Um, you know, if you can't have eggs, you can still use uh, egg equivalent. So you could do sort of like a flaxseed gel if you wanted. There are so many different options on the web. Um, just have a look, but you are able to use other alternatives if you can't have egg. Okay, so the next few steps is basically salt, pepper. Um, I also like to add some paprika. Um, I'm using smoked paprika today. Mm. But again, up to you. That's a nice um, twist. Some dried chili or other spices if you like. If you want to make it maybe Moroccan or if you want to even do maybe an Asian spice, like a Chinese fire spice, I mean, it would be a different recipe altogether, but you know, you can play around. Okay. Um, and I'm going to add my panko breadcrumbs, which is 40 grams. You can also make your own breadcrumbs. So I usually, I, I've got two kids in my household and they, they refuse to eat the beginning and the end of the breads. I don't know why. Uh, anyway, so they don't eat them. So what I do is I keep the pieces in a Ziploc bag in my freezer and uh, I make breadcrumbs out of the, um, the ending. So I don't throw them away. And because I use them for the cooking, they eat it 
then anyway, just in a different process style. <laughs> it's a good way to, so you don't have that wastage as well, hey? Mm. So we're just going to money. Now. So you're mixing it all together now. And then we're going to form the meatballs out of it. Yeah, so we've got our beautifully mixed mint. Smells really beautiful. Wow. Mm, yummy. So yes, we're going to form the meatballs now. I'm just going to use a little cup for that. Mm -hmm. And I'll just pop my gloves on. Oh yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> I, I don't like touching raw meat and uh, I prefer the, the um, gloves doing that too. Also a good idea for rolling the, the meatballs if you don't like to touch meat and uh, not using the gloves is um, use an ice cream scoop. That also makes even portion sizes, same like with, your, with that little cup that you're using here. Yeah. Um, and you can just, you know, um, squeeze it and they fall out. So that's a ball. Um, so yeah. around four centimetres. Uh, and you can just put them on both levels of the warmer. So that's one level mm -hmm. and that's your other level. So okay. we end up doing about near eight, maybe on each level, thereabouts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so pretty yeah, straight. I'll have more making making mini ones. Did you spray oil the tray and the base? Yeah, so it's already sprayed. Great. Just, yeah, okay. That avoids it um, sticking to um, to to the size and also helps you with the cleaning then afterwards. Great. All right. No, all right. So you keep going, rolling uh, your meatballs there, whilst we are heading back to Tracy's kitchen. And how's the sauce going ahead? Well, the sauce is done, so I'll just show right. you. I'll try and show you. The... It, it's a very kind of runny um, sauce, but mm -hmm. that actually really thickens up once you put it in the fridge. And mm -hmm. I can pop that aside, and I'm going to use what I love, my next bowl, my spare bowl. Second bowl. Second bowl. <laughs> Don't you love a second bowl? That's love a second bowl. Now. Yes, so I'm going to get started with the pudding mix now. So mm -hmm. go to my next instruction. Oops, I think I might have touched a... Okay. <laughs> Skipped ahead already. Yeah. So it, it tells you to, to cool it in a jug. So mm -hmm. I'm going to place the reserved dates that are soaking in water into the bowl. Mm -hmm. And I like to soak them in my thermo bowl, which mm -hmm. I use for every time I cook. And 40 grams of butter. So, um, Tracy, we have about one third of the participants here today have stated they have a TM6, so they know exactly what you're doing here and seeing the guided cooking. But two thirds do have either no thermal mix or have a TM31. And the other third has a TM5. So TM5 users cannot make these recipes as well and find them and they have to sync them to their cookie to get them um, available guided here on the machine. But what you're doing here is something um, probably non-owners or TM31 owners haven't seen before. So this guided cooking basically replaces a cookbook in your kitchen and we get the recipes straight onto the, uh, onto the screen. And all we need to do is follow the prompts where, that we get uh, shown there on our, uh, on our display. And I really love it because I feel like I can't go wrong. I feel like I can't fail as long as I read properly. So I'm going to add 110 grams of brown sugar and I just love that it actually weighs it out for you, but I've obviously pre-weighed everything for the purpose of, um, you know, taking a shorter time. 
So 150 grams of flour. And it doesn't matter if it's a couple of grams over, it's not going to make a difference in this recipe. Half a teaspoon of baking powder. And one large egg, which I have here. We pop our lid back on. Mm -hmm. And it's going to ask me to cook it, or to put it on the speed five. So it's just mixing the pudding mixture, speed five, for 20 seconds. So my mixture is now ready. I'm going to pour it into my Jariol moulds um, and get ready to steam it in the Varoma. Perfect. So basically, um, ah, now we can see them. Perfect. So all these little moulds. So um, these are, they're quite big. They're big moulds. Um, and then <laughs> I've actually got some uh, silicon Dariol moulds um, ready on order at the mix shop. So mm -hmm. in the meantime, I found these aluminium Dariol moulds and yeah. I've greased them to use. I've used ramekins before, um, but I'm excited to get the silicon ones from the mix shop because I, I make this dessert quite a bit. Right. Yeah, let's have a look how you're uh, pouring that in for a moment. And then I can show um, our audience the silicon ones that you have just referred to. Because I do have them here in my kitchen. And oh, that looks yummy. Oh, so it's a nice <laughs> batter. Can I, can I come and lick the bowl? <laughs> oh, you, you, you might have to fight for that. <laughs> oh, no worries. Um, all right, Sandy, if we can just quickly come to my screen and I want to show you uh, what um, Tracy was referring to. So we do have these silicon moulds. They fit ideally. Um, the round one fit completely in the bottom tray of the, of the Varoma and the, 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 large, or the, the, the rectangle one fits easy, easily into the tray. So you can have two layers. So instead of one large portion, you can have two layers and they fit beautifully in here. And that's not only for the st sticky date puddings, that's also um, uh, steam your muffins, for example. Um, so they stay very moist and yeah, they're not dry and falling apart. All right, so wanted to show you that whilst um, Tracy is basically finishing filling up her moulds and uh, just putting that on uh, the steaming for, I think they steam about 30 minutes. So we're not going to see you for a while. <laughs> and basically the machine tells you to pop in, uh, water is it, how much water is it? Uh, Elizabeth, you come back to you in a second. Uh, finishing off quickly, um, showing the <laughs> to Tracy's kitchen. Sorry, Sandy, I'm putting you a lot of stress here. Thank you. <laughs> so I think Tracy. Yeah, so I'm going now to can hear you. Yeah, so I'm going to clean my bowl and um, put some water in. And then I'll set my Varoma with the little puddings on top and set it on to steam. They need to steam for about 20 minutes. It's quite a quick oh, dessert, okay. really. Okay, perfect. Wonderful. So basically the, mach the, the machine or the recipe tells you anyway what to do. Um, and now this would just steam uh, with, uh, with the water and uh, how to put the lid on top and everything we're going to see uh, in, a, in a different recipe. It's always the same. No, it's not getting any harder than, than this so far. Okay, so now we're heading over to Elizabeth's kitchen. She was already ready to go. <laughs> Yay. Just checking if I'm off mute. Welcome oh, everybody to my kitchen. You're in Blair Gallery at the moment and I'm very lucky the sun is shining and it is a beautiful day but I think it's going to rain very soon. 
just before I start with my recipe, they were talking about the silicon mould. I have to show you these little Dariol moulds which I use to make the skinny dates and the top of things, and they fit in beautifully and they're so nice to use and it's a nice little shape. So I just thought, mix shop, give shopping, put that on your list. Now, I'm doing for you today, presenting for you whole cauliflower with pea puree. Great if you've got vegetarians in your family. Great if you're looking for another way to present cauliflower. And it's also keto friendly. Uh, it does have dairy in it, but the dairy could be substituted for the vegans who would know what to do. So to begin with, it says to do the Parmesan cheese. Well, just in the interest of saving a bit of time, I just want to show you that's what it would go in to the machine. <laughs> And that's how it comes out. So I just thought I'd quickly get that done before we start, just so we could juice along here. The great way of not, pop that over there. Anyway, get forward. So to begin with, I'm just going to jump over to there. And it's asking for parsley. And guess what? I haven't done the parsley. <laughs> so I'm going to jump that. And... Oh, it says set the parsley aside. So while I'm doing something else in an, and you're in another kitchen, I can go downstairs and pick some parsley out of my garden. Now it says place in two garlic cloves and then it's going to say to chop them. I make garlic paste in my Thermomix and keep that in the fridge. So I'm going to concertina this process as well. So I've already got that in here. So I don't need to mm -hmm. chop it up. It's already done. And I don't need to scrape down the sides of the bowl. Now, interesting, it says add paprika. Like Michelle, hot smoked paprika is for me. But all the bits and pieces that I'm going to be putting in, I've already got here, and we'll just go, boom, in it goes. So we've got paprika, we've got tomato paste, we've got thyme, also out of my garden. Uh, olive oil? No, that goes in next. <laughs> Salt, you'll love my style of cooking. I think that's about right. Awesome. <laughs> and, oh, pepper. I think that's to about taste. right too. To taste, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so in goes the cup, measuring cup, and we're off and running. There we go. So 10 seconds on speed seven. That's great. Luckily, yeah. Zoom takes the noise out, so you can't hear what's going on. <laughs> we can hear a little bit. But yeah, I can see. Making... <laughs> it smells delicious. So, next. This is a bit interesting now. We're going to start talking about your corona. Here's a little tray, so you can get from the mix shop. Uh, which just gently lifts any food that is of certain size off the base and it means the steam can go through and cook evenly. If you don't have a little trivet, use your butterfly and that can just sit in like that and that will gently lift it off to create the same result. Another possibility, cross some forks upside down and that will raise your food. And it was, oh, this is as well. And that comes in handy for a lot of different things. Jenny, have I missed anything on that one? No, that's fine. Um, yeah, using the trivet, that's really good. You have to see, elevate the food a little bit. So the, the, the little openings at the bottom of, this, of your Varoma are not blocked. That's what you want to avoid. Otherwise, the steam cannot circulate evenly um, around the food. Okay, now this paste... Can you see that? Mm, yeah, beautiful. Delicious. Now, because I'm a little bit OCDC, <laughs> I did this before because I'd never done it before. And one of the things I worked out was use my pastry brush to paint the top. And then I'm That's getting a good more idea. Even, even coverage. So we're and just doing this. You don't have messy fingers. Exactly, yeah. So over it goes, and it means I can get down the sides as well, not just on the top. 
Mm -hmm. So that gives me a lot of joy and pleasure. <laughs> In fact, that's a much better job than I did the first time. Okay, now. What are we going to do now? Let's see what Mr. Thurman Mix is telling me. We call her the Fräulein amongst our family. So we've pasted in the dish, we've done the mixture, pasted it on, and now it says water. So I'm actually not going to clean my bowl. I'm just going to no. put the water in there. Yeah. Cool. I wouldn't either. But sometimes we just, you know, Tim said, we, we just go uh, bold and do whatever we want. Yeah, tearing back is very important. Tearing back to zero when you start weighing in. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I forget. <laughs> and then it's hard to go backwards on that one. Okay, so that's my water in. I don't think you can see my screen, but I've been using Cookie Do America. And um, I'm still in answers, so I'm sort of winning this a bit. Okay, so I've popped my water in. I've put my cauliflower in. I've secured my varoma. And now I'm just going to put the lid in. You realise you just pop it on. There's no locking that just sits there beautifully. Mm. And I'm now going to go for 20 minutes. Great. So I'm going to say, see ya. And then you'll come back and you'll get to see the puree, the pea puree, which is also delicious. Really good. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. This was great. We are on our way to Brighton and in going to Kim's kitchen. Here she is. And Kim is showing us another um, very popular old demo dish. And it's called the Asian style fish fillet for the fish lovers. Hi, Kim. Hello, Jenny, and hello to everyone out there cooking along with us. I hope you're all having fun. Who's cooking along making the Asian fish fillets? I hope there's someone going to do it with me. Um, oh, Asian yeah. fish fillets, yes, would have to be one of my favourite Thermomix dishes. Um, plus, just the whole concept of the multi-level cooking, I find um, something that I really love with my Thermomix. If you're ever wanting to you know, challenge yourself by doing the multi-level cooking and you're on Cookie Do, you can go into the filters under tags and type in multi-level, steaming, um, layered, and you'll get quite a few dishes that will come up and you can really challenge yourself. So it's, it is quite easy, steaming. Um, just think of, you know, if you had a steamer on the stovetop, water in the bottom, something else in there, and then steaming on top. Same philosophy here with the Thermomix, but our advantage is it tells us what to do. So with the Asian fish fillets, the recipe does say uh, white fish. Personally, I prefer the salmon, um, so I'm doing salmon today. And I also add in a couple of other things as well, which I'll tell you. You can, could do it with chicken. Uh, if you're vegetarian, you could also do it with tofu or even mushroom. So the sauce is delicious, an Asian sauce, and it's up to you what protein you want to use. So to start with, uh, start cooking. And we are going to put in all our lovely Asian flavours, uh, ginger. So I've just got some ginger here, put that in. Garlic, uh, not quite like the other girls where I overload the garlic. I have one <laughs> huge clove of garlic, that's plenty for me. Jenny, yes, talking yeah, to you. Yeah, all right. Everyone can do their own. <laughs> I'm and waiting for also, the coriander. <laughs> yeah, the coriander. I know there's people out there who don't like coriander, and that's okay. We understand apparently it's part of your genetic makeup that you can't cope with coriander. Luckily, I don't have that. I also put the roots of the coriander in because there's lots of flavour in the roots. So in here, I've got the roots, the stems, and the leaves, the whole lot. Put it all in. No throwing anything away. Then we have our lemongrass. Now, secret with the lemongrass. If you cut the lemongrass in big pieces like that, it's still going to be quite fibrous in the sauce at the end. So unfortunately, there is a little bit of chopping that needs to be done. So I cut it up into thin pieces already. Uh, so I've got a bowl full of thin pieces of lemongrass and put that in. So then you won't actually get that sort of, you know, fibery kind of texture at the end. 
and the chili. So I've already cut my chili up, pop that one in. Spring onion or shallot, you can use either. Put that in. And lime zest, that goes in too. And lid on, and we're just going to chop all of that down for three seconds up on speed seven. Right, the delay with the arms, that is a safety feature just to make sure that all the food has dropped down. So then we just scrape down the sides. Oh my goodness, the aroma is amazing. So there you go, you can see how easily it's chopped it. That's three seconds. Oh, phew. And you can smell the coriander. <laughs> oh, phew. It's a chili, I think. All right, okay. so with the sauces, this has a teaspoon of sesame oil. I actually put a tablespoon of sesame oil in. I do love sesame with... oil. Yeah, I love sesame oil too. And I also put some fish sauce in. So a tablespoon of fish sauce. So as many of you know, you don't have to do exactly what the recipe says. You're the one in control, not the Thermomix. So there's a few basic things that you would always follow the rules with with Thermomix, but when it comes to ingredients, whatever you want. Tamari, which is the Japanese soy sauce, quite like that. So we'll do a couple of tablespoons like that. Did someone say they don't like fish sauce? Was that one of the... Yeah, great tip from Chris here. She says um, she doesn't like the fish sauce. There's, um, she's using meat or paste instead. Oh, yes, that would be nice. Very nice. Yeah. All right, we have everything in. And then we're just going to saute it for a couple of minutes. Speed two. So we'll do that for a couple of minutes. In the meantime... We have got our rice. So I've got my rice in my basket, white rice I'm using this time, um, and I've already washed that. So that's ready to go. If you were doing brown rice, I tend to soak my brown rice for at least an hour. So it does make it a lot better for your digestive system if you have soaked the brown rice, just to soften it up so you can digest it better. Um, as someone pointed out before, there is this one that you can use from, you can get it from the mix shop for layering up our Varoma. You can sit it in the top like that. But we're not doing that this time because we are going to pour our marinade all the way over. Got a couple <laughs> of people trying to distract me. Uh, okay, yes. So now the big question always is, which layer do you put the fish on and which layer do you put the vegetables on? Uh, personally, I like to put my fish on the top layer and that way I can put a lot more vegetables in the base here. Uh, whew, let's take that out and let the uh, aromas go free. Delightful. Uh, so yes, I have my, my salmon here ready to go. So we put that on the, the top of top layer of the Varoma. Now I won't put the vegetables in straight away because mm -hmm. I've got um, bok choy, uh, what have I got, bok choy capsicum and broccolini and it's not going to take quite as long. So the rice will take about 16 minutes and the fish will cook in that same amount of time as well. If you were doing uh, brown rice, obviously that would be about 25 minutes. You would not add your fish in till a little later. Uh, so fish, depending on what size it is, can take anywhere, the salmon, anywhere from, you know, sort of eight minutes up to 15 minutes, depending on what else you have in your bowl. Oh, and also the, the sizes of the cut of the fish yes. um, as well. So if you get thicker ones, then obviously they uh, take a little bit longer than the smaller yeah. ones. 
Yeah, so with the brown rice, I also the the longer you soak it, the the quicker it cooks. But for brown rice, I would probably even suggest thirty minutes minimum. Oh, because that I, can take... I get away with I get away with twenty five minutes as long as you're doing right, speed so... four. Speed four, you have to have. Yeah, definitely speed yeah. four. Yeah. So I've emptied out my marinade, but I'm not cleaning the bowl because I want this to flavour the rice as well. So we put that one in, just step through. We've weighed our rice, we've rinsed our rice. I love these tips about not cleaning the bowl. Um, first of all, it makes our life easier. And second, um, obviously, no one loves cook <laughs> cleaning their bowl in between. So Quite use right. all the flavours. All right, so I've put in a litre of water. Put my rice in, put the lid on, that one on, and then put this one on top. So at this stage, there's nothing in the bottom here. So once we get sort of five minutes along, I will um, I'll just show you how to safely, once because you might miss it, you might be in someone else's kitchen. When you're cooking, and you want to add in your vegetables to the base here, always turn this lid away from you unless you would like to steam your face, but I don't recommend that whilst you're cooking. Use it as a tray. Just slide your Varoma on top of there. You can take it off. Then you lift this one up and then just throw all your vegetables in and then pop it back on. All right. Great so, tips, Kim. Oh, thank you, Jenny. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, come on. Yes, we've done that. Yeah, not putting our vegetables in yet. If you were using carrots, then I would put them in now because carrots do take a little bit longer. Um, or potatoes. Yeah. So, again, yeah, good point, potatoes. So that simmering basket can be used for putting your potatoes in and then steaming your vegetables on top here as well. Then when you want to mash your potatoes, obviously you just take your simmering basket out, take a bit of the water out, throw your potatoes in, and then like five seconds you've got your mashed potato. Uh, anyway, speed four we do. So you always do speed four with rice. Push that steam up. And I think that's about it. Oh, no. Marinade. <laughs> so we're pouring our marinade over the fish. And that will also go through and flavour the vegetables and flavour the rice. Beautiful. Okay, now I'm done. Very good. <laughs> go to someone else's kitchen now. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Kim. We're going back to Michelle and to the meatballs with tomato sauce. And how are we going? Oh, <laughs> you had a break already. <laughs> I am. Um... My Thermomix just went off because it was edible. Um, good. I made uh, 13 meatballs in the end. So, wow. Yeah, that quite a bit. Um, if you did use the 400 grams of meat, then obviously you would get a little bit less meatballs. But, you know, the quantity to the herbs and the garlic to the meat, etc., worked perfectly. So I'm just going to resume my last recipe. And now we're going to be making the tomato sauce. Um, so the first ingredient is garlic. So again, as you know, I love my garlic. So I've got a nice big clove there and another little one. So I'm going to pop that in. Then we're going to add brown onion. So it says between 50 to 80 grams. So I'm going to use a whole onion there. It's a vegetable. Of course. Chuck it in. <laughs> That's going in. And that, um, for those that don't know, onion actually thickens sauce especially in Indian cooking, my, my background is actually Indian. So having more onion actually makes a thicker gravy. So just so you know, um, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> so if you like right. that, onion is the way to go. I didn't know that. There you go. Um, and again, you know, I love my chili. So you can't go wrong with a bit of chili infused olive oil. So for the sauteing, um, I'm going to use a bit of chili oil as well just to add a little bit of a kick. So you definitely want to, don't want to be dining at my house if you don't like chili, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I love all these little tips and tricks for the recipes to zhuzh them up. Yeah, it's good. Right. I mean, I do also, you know, do the standard, the recipe as well. But yeah, I just, I, I think because I've come from an Indian background, I'm always used to lots of flavor. So I always need a little bit of something else. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, a, you know, for everyone here today who's not quite a confident cook yet, just it's good to see that you can actually do your own thing um, still going, using a guided recipe as a base, but still do your own thing. Replace it with what you want or can have and make it vegetarian if you, if you want and so on. This is great. So we're just going to quickly chop that. Chopping up the onions. Yep. Did you want to have a look at that? Shall we show you chopped onions? Maybe yes, let's have a quick look. There we go, perfectly chopped onion and garlic. Wow. I definitely don't miss chopping those. No. <laughs> Nothing worse than eyes like crying and ugh, I hate it. Stinky fingers. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, no, we don't want it. smell is quite, like it doesn't really come out of the Thermomix too. So you don't actually get any weeping eyes which is good um all right so now we're about to saute it so that will be at 120 degrees which the thermomix um does that all automatically for you so that's going to be three minutes sauteing did you want to go to someone else johnny or did you want to keep talking? Uh, yes so we can quickly come to my kitchen for for that time so um, because we, um, we've already seen a couple of things of attachments that can go into the aroma, so um, the steaming tray, but what you haven't seen yet is what we also have on offer are uh, these um, aroma sheets. So there's two versions available. They also go, uh, they can go in, in both trays, in the tray or in, in the base. And uh, one of them is, has clo is completely closed and the other one has um, steaming holes in it. So um, that helps you. So for example, for the steaming the fish, you could place that on top or the, or the meatballs and then you have just less cleaning up time afterwards. And the closed ones we could use to make to steam omelettes in there. So if you pop them in here and then the egg uh, don't go through the lids. So again, this just adds a couple of more um, uh, ways of using your your uh, aroma and uh, but you can also uh, cut them up obviously okay and I think I've got one more minute <laughs> because Kim was pointing out uh, they're not made of silicon they're like um, they're like uh, uh, baking paper sheets um, uh, Kim was pointing out a couple of uh, ideas on how to find Varoma recipes on uh, Cookie Do. There's a whole collection, which is actually also a physical book, and uh, it is called Fabulous Flavor on Every Level. Every single recipe um, in this book uses the Varoma, and uh, you can find, you don't have to buy the book. It's uh, it, the whole book is available as part of your Cookie Do subscription. So if you are interested in a couple more recipes. And one of them also shows how you can cook rice in the Varoma. There's a trick to that. And um, yeah, just want to make you curious. That's a, a great collection there for further Varoma recipes. All right. How's the sauteing going, Michelle? Yep, you're back. <laughs> can you hear me now yes we can great so yeah so it's going well we've got 13 seconds to go um at the moment beautiful smells of garlic and onion so um, my house is smelling very lovely um it's funny how just such simple things can make the house smell really good and people will come and wonder what's cooking and it's just onion and garlic sofa and a bit of chili um, so yeah, so we're really excited to taste this soon. All 
Alrighty, I'll just show you what that looks like. There we go. Mm. I wish you could smell it, but um, maybe one day there'll be smell a vision. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to add 800 grams of crushed canned tomatoes. So just so you know as well, you can actually make your own tomato sauce, passata and tomato paste in the Thermomix. So I don't know if you've tried that before or not, but definitely try it if you haven't. Um, ends up being a lot cheaper and healthier for you as well. Now, because I do like lots of flavour, I'm actually adding a few extra things. So what I've got in here is my veggie stock. Um, hopefully you've tried that one before. I've also got beautiful herbs from my garden. So I've got rosemary, thyme and oregano. Um, and then I've got a bit of sugar, just a teaspoon, just um, to take a bit of that tartness away from the tomato. I'm gonna put that in now. And it's got a bit of pepper in there as well. And now it says to place the Varoma. So yeah, when it says that, we have to take out the measuring cup, as you know, for default or stand up, the measuring cup or MC always sits in the hole of the mixing bowl lid. But when we're using the Varoma, obviously we put the lid on top and then we um, set, put the Varoma on top. Okay, I'll just show you my meatballs before we go any further. So there we are. My little meatball. <laughs> and, and then in two layers, yeah. Yeah, two layers. So um, no, it's a bit harder to show you that one. But That's all yeah. right. Yeah, perfect. Nicely spread out. Yeah, and you want to keep um, the middle free so that the air can, or the steam can get through as well. Mm. That's good. Position that. All right, pop that on top. Pop that on. And then next. Oops, went too far. Okay, so these are going to, basically the, the Thermomix is gonna cook the sauce and steam the meatballs in, for tw in 20 minutes. So basically we just turn the dial and away it goes. So um, yeah, we'll be ready in 20 minutes. So I'll see you then. Wonderful, thanks so much, Michelle. Okay, so now I wanna show you um, just quickly how you can use your Varoma to sterilize Jar. So um, when you're making your own veg stock, vegetable stock paste, whilst you're cooking the veggie stock paste, it takes about 20 minutes or so, you can just take uh, the jar of your choice for the veggie stock paste and um, just pop the jar like that into your Varoma tray, pop it on top whilst the veggie stock paste is cooking. This way you are sterilising your jar just as that. And... Um, <laughs> Also, just because we currently have the topic, I wanted to let you know, you could also sterilize your washed face masks in the Varoma if you'd like. So same, um, you just uh, pop it in, in the tray and um, steam it with um, probably um, a couple of drops of essential oils. And then when, uh, when they're done and you, have, you pop them back on, they also have a nice smell. But I wouldn't do that together with the food, just uh, to be clear on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, because we're having these beautiful uh, meatballs with tomato sauce, uh, very often we get the question, ah, can you make pasta at the same time? So, no, not in this recipe and not with the thermal mix. But I want to show you today how you can cook pasta using your thermal server. For everyone who bought a thermal mix last month, has gotten a free oval thermo server. If they haven't arrived yet, they will soon. And um, all I'm gonna do is using my Thermomix here, using the kettle mode to bring the water to boil. Okay, so now I'm preparing my thermo server. All I did was put in a little bit of salt. And this is how you open a package of, <laughs> of spaghetti in a half a second, <laughs> like that. and 
then this is 500 grams of spaghetti and I just pop them in there like this, right? And all I need to do is wait for my water to boil. Um, I've already preheated it, sorry, to make it a little bit quicker. And here we go. Using my kettle function. And now I'm adding that my boiled water just on top of the dry pasta. So they're um, swimming in there or they're just covered with it. And I'm uh, using just a little bit of fork to separate them, just making sure the water is also going in between. By now they're still um, stiff and they can't really bend. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I pop my lid on top and the cooking time is exactly the same time as the package states. So this is usually between 10 or 11 minutes. So what I would do is I, pop, um, I put a, a timer on because you need to be very careful. You can overcook pasta in a thermal server. So it doesn't need to boil. And um, so I'm gonna pop that on 10 minutes now. And after the 10 minutes, I'll give it a little bit of stir and then have it again sitting in there for maximum one to two minutes. And then I would definitely try. Um, and then I'm using my Varoma dish as a colander to strain them through. So this is how you can make pasta at the same time whilst your sauce and meatballs are cooking in the thermos server. How good is that? <laughs> I hope there's something new for you and you didn't know. Okay, enough from my kitchen. Yay, there we go. <laughs> Enough from my kitchen. We're heading back to Elizabeth and the cauliflower with the mesh peas. Welcome back. Wow, it's been so much information, Jenny. It's hard to absorb it all. Right, I'm ready now to move on to the next uh, step. So it says remove the Verona. So I'm carefully taking the lid off, turning it away from my face, and I'm going to use the lid as a tray so that it doesn't drip onto my bench. So I'll just move that aside there. So I've done that and it says insert the basket. Do we all know what that is? I'll just take the lid off. So in it goes. Now I'm making sure that this side is on the handle side and that's so when the peas are cooked, I'll be able to lift it off using my spatula. I'm sure you all know to do that, those of you who have a thermo mix. So here are my peas, in they go. And it says the reserved garlic clove to go in with. I've already got it <laughs> mashed and bash. A little bit of olive oil. I love this garlic paste. I've, I have that as well. I use it all the time. So close my little lid. Back on she goes. And my cauliflower's got a little bit more to go to. But my kitchen is now full of the most delicious aromas from the, the paste that we made to put on top. I am actually mm. expecting my neighbours to come banging on my door saying, let us in, let us in. <laughs> okay, so I've, I've put my peas in. I've added my garlic. I've placed my aroma back on. I've secured the lid. And off we go. Five minutes. So you're back to me in five minutes. A bit longer. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. And we're heading over back to Brighton to Kim's Kitchen. How's the fish going? Oh, it smells absolutely amazing here. Absolutely amazing. If you love coriander. <laughs> okay. So we take our fish layer off. So we'll put that one on there. And we can put that, we'll just pop it in the uh, Varoma for the moment to keep it warm just whilst we... The thermo server? Yep. That's the one, the thermo server, yes. <laughs> just pop the lid on there and move that one aside. And then we've got our veggies here and our rice. Okay. So as Elizabeth was starting to say, 
Do you, do you want to? Oh, yes, we have done that. That's okay. There is a hook on your spatula and there's a hole in your simmering basket. And that will allow you to lift up the simmering basket because it is quite warm uh, when you've been cooking with it. And we'll put that on there. And then we'll just get a plate. We'll plate up our food and a spoon. This is the beauty of cooking in your own kitchen. Everything's at your, at your fingertips. Rice is cooked perfectly. It's not white because we have still have got all the, uh, the sauce, the marinade that has gone through that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's sprinkled a little bit with more flavour. Yes, the rice it looks delicious. Just pop that aside. And we'll get our piece of fish. Oh, yep, it's cooked. There we go. Fish and some vegetables. A lovely bok choy. A bit of oh. capsicum. Lucky I haven't had lunch yet. <laughs> There we go, this lots of vegetables. Great. This is the best part of our job is currently that everything we're cooking, we're allowed to have to for ourselves. <laughs> so. But just for those who are a bit dubious about the, the salmon, you can see mm. it, hopefully you can see that it is cooked in there. And something else I thought about, which I do quite a bit too with steaming, if you've got people in the family go, oh, I don't like fish, I don't want fish tonight, I want chicken, and someone else says, oh, well, I want fish, you can get your baking paper and just make up little parcels. So wrap up a fillet of fish, a fillet of chicken, put um, the marinade in there and steam both of them in the Varoma together. So you can do a vegetarian a dish, a salmon dish and a chicken dish all in the one Varoma if you wrap them up in little parcels in the baking paper. And I quite often, um, with the red uh, curry paste, um, I, I make that up and put that into um, freezer trays and then into Ziploc bags. So when I do my little parcels, I'll just put one ice block and a bit of lime juice, wrap that up in the baking paper and steam that. And it's delicious. That's wow, it for me. Another great tip there. Don't forget to take a picture of this beautiful dish so Ooh, we can yes, okay. put that all together on the on a, a Facebook page later. Um, so everyone um, who we have a, um, a Thermomix uh, Bayside uh, Facebook group where all the consultants and, uh, are there and we're going to populate the beautiful dishes that we made today so for you and also together with the links of the recipe so you can go back and uh and try them for yourselves Wonderful. and the, and the asian so fish sorry just to interrupt yeah the asian fish fillet recipe you will find that for people who've got the tm31 that is in your basic cookbook which i would hope that after all this time you've tried it um <laughs> it's on cookie do and you'll find something similar on recipe community as well so everyone yeah. can make it yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Kim. Um, that fish looks delicious. And we're going back to Tracy and seeing these beautiful yeah, steam. So there's the little steamed puddings. <laughs> They're finished. I've actually turned one out onto a plate already. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're going to top that with the caramel sauce, which has thickened up nicely. Oh, wow. I'm being a bit generous. <sighs> But something I like to serve it up with is a good dollop of cream because that helps to cut through the sweetness. And there you have <laughs> a sticky toffee pudding and they are so soft and flushy, uh, fluffy and flavoursome, very caramelly, delicious. Yes. Oh, it looks amazing. <laughs> at that just to top it up uh, this is and I also I just wanted to say that also the fish and this one this looks this is restaurant quality food you're making here in your own absolutely. kitchen really with absolutely look how 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 easy was that to make almost next to no 
um, effort that you have to put in and you don't even know how to cook and you can create so delicious things just like that. Great. Don't forget to take a picture. <laughs> we, okay. need that. we need that. Everyone to water their mouth when they, when they have a look at our beautiful dishes we made today. Thanks so much, Tracy. You're welcome. And we go one more time back to Elizabeth. How is the mash going? The pea mash. Okay, well, I'm just going to show you the next step. But I want to be in Tracy's kitchen. Smells <laughs> <laughs> delicious. I had planned, after this cooking class, I had planned to do something entirely different. But I think I might be making the sticky toffee pudding. <laughs> it is all about inspiration here. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so my next step now is to remove the varoma because we're going to do the mashed thing. And I don't know if you can see that, but that just looks and smells delicious. The next step is we're going to mash the peas. So as I we've mentioned, to remove the basket, off we go like this. Now the instructions say discard the liquid. No, it's going to make a great soup. So I'm going to pop that somewhere else temporarily. That's a great idea. It, it, look, it's already a soup as it is, but if you add, for instance, let's suppose you know, I don't eat all that cauliflower, I can just whack it in there with some broccoli and cook it all up and zhuzh it, and I've got a wonderful potage. Mm. So moving along, I've done that. And now we're going to put the peas in. So I'm lifting my little lid. I can still use this. Mine's still so new, it's a little bit stiff. So I'm just going to pop that in there like so. Ooh. It's a great little trick there. Open the lid first before you hook the spatula in. So this way it doesn't flap over when you empty the, the basket. So it says add the butter. Of course, you realise even though it's firm and mixed ways, it's all for me. Just for convenience, I've weighed most of this before. So hang on, it's just, oh, it's got a little mind of its own. It's trotting on without you have a You probably have a little bit of liquid um, on top of your screen. Right. So you might just wipe it down. Yeah, sometimes it does that because the screen's obviously... Um, sensitive, touchy, touch, touchy, <laughs> touch That's sensitive. That's for me, Jenny. I didn't know that. What a good thing that it happened because now everybody now in you know. class knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if that happens and your, your uh, screen starts flickering or ghosting yourself, so then um, just wipe the screen down and that you should be fine again. Right. Well, I'm just going to go back to where we were up to, where it said to add the butter. <laughs> Except you can't find it. I can't find it anymore. <laughs> I'm going to. Oh, all right. there we go. Yeah. I'm, I'm, back on, I'm almost back on track. Okay, butter's in. Cream. So I haven't weighed this out. Could have something to do with a little bit lazy, but I think this will work quite well. I don't need a lot. That's mm. it. You don't want to overdo it. Well, maybe we do. Let's see. You need some cream for the for the toffee puddings, you know. Remember that? <laughs> well, it's interesting you should say that because that's quite a bit of cream and I'm on my own. I'm not going to get through that. So what I was actually going to do when this class finishes was make my own butter. Yeah, I think you do that, that too. might come first. Okay, so there's my salt. Now, a little bit of this liquid needs to go back in. I swear, why would they say throw it away? There is so many. You could make a gravy. Whoops. Sorry, that was my pasta. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, what was that? Okay. All, right, all good. So a little bit of liquid. You keep going. Okay. That's it. Just a smidgen. Move that to the side. A bit of a messy cook, really, but... Um, with my thermomix, it does limit the mess that I can possibly make. <laughs> so, where's my little lid? Well, I don't know what I've done with it, so I'm just going to pop that on top. 
and 25 seconds to smash it on speed seven. Now, because it's been hot, it starts off a bit slowly. All right, so mashing the, mashing the peas. <laughs> now we can't hear you. All right. Mm, it looks like a guacamole. <laughs> it does, yeah. actually. But it is delicious. And again, if, let's suppose, you make this and you find you've got this and a bit of the cauliflower left and you don't want to reheat it. Yeah. So, now, it says just mash it up again. But personally speaking, I don't really want to. I like a little bit coarser than what yeah. they've recommended here. So, Absolutely. what Jenny, I'm going to do is now... Serve this up. Do you want to come back to me when it's all ready to yep. be served? Because my serving yep. technique. You okay. plate it up. We quickly have a look at Michelle's kitchen. And uh, I think the meatballs in tomato sauce should be done now. All Ellie, right. we have still got another minute. All right, perfect. And come quickly to my kitchen and I'll show you what happened to the pasta <laughs> so far. Okay, so... Um, Show you the, the different already, so I need to just need to be careful. Uh, I think we're back to Michelle's kitchen. At least I can see her. Let's just double check. Anyway, so uh, the pasta has beautifully cooked, and you can see um, it's all um, flexible, and I can I can turn around in here. I've just took a um, took one sample and had a little bit of bite, um, and it still has a bit of bite, so I added another. Uh, two minutes to uh, to the cooking time, which is again not really not really cooking. So see and see, it's beautiful and test. Mmm, al dente, perfect. Here we go. My time's up. So now I'm using my my, my Roma dish as a colander, and I'm just going to strain it through. Pop it back into the into the thermos server so my pasta keeps warm. And is your uh, tomato sauce now ready, Michelle? It is now. Hey, okay, over back to you. Great. Welcome back. So I'm just going to remove the lid, but you have to be careful because there's a lot of hot steam coming out. I don't know if you can see that, probably not. <laughs> well, come around this way. So, um, smells great, by the way. I'm really excited to eat these. I'm just going to use my tongs to take them off. They definitely look cooked, so that's great. Um, so I won't be able to... Oh, I could probably bring them down and show you. Move this. There we go. Oops. <laughs> That's the meatballs and my glasses are fogging up from the steam. Oh. <laughs> we can still see you. All good. <laughs> um, alrighty. So I'm just going to pop my meatballs in. The other thing I find about steaming meatballs, which may be unusual to you, is um, other than the health benefits of it, is... Um, also, they're really nice and moist and, um, yeah, really succulent. They just seem to just take in all the juices of the actual pasta sauce, mm. which is what I love. I'm just going to pop that there for now. Okay. Mm. Um, move that out of the way. All righty. And now we've got our lovely sauce. So... Here we go. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> Don't tilt it too fast. Otherwise, you have a lot of mess in your kitchen. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, 
I know um, when I make them the last time, so the sauce is quite chunky at the moment because we haven't blended it, right? So it really has all these um, beautiful tomato pieces still in there. If you would have a fussy eater like I have at home, um, feel free to puree the sauce at this stage or take portions out for those who don't mind the pieces in it. And for uh, the baby toddler parts, they, um, well, they obviously don't get the chili version <laughs> of it, <laughs> not yours, but you could puree um, the sauce at this stage before serving it up as well. Oh, that okay. looks beautiful. Hard to uh, do it without it sliding off, but I've also got some micro herbs just for today to fancy it up, to be a bit of a chef. And um, this is kale micro herbs. <laughs> Add a little bit of zhuzh, as uh, Liz would, Elizabeth would say. Um, mm -hmm. Zhuzh it up a bit. Oh, yay. Very nice. Don't yeah. forget to take a photo. And yes. everyone else needs to imagine my pasta going on the side <laughs> with this beautiful dish. Thank you so much, Michelle, for showing a lot of insight and uh, sharing your knowledge today about um, cooking with the Varoma. And we're heading one more time back to Elizabeth and want to see your end result for the vegetarian dish that you made today. And here we, here go. we go. Let's see how this works. Oh, delicious. Now, the other little thing that I would do, um, I'm very fond of yogurt. So some yogurt that I've made myself, I'd probably drizzle a bit on either onto the puree or onto the um, cauliflower before I serve. You You're a bit hard to hear, sorry. Sorry to interrupt you, a bit hard to hear. Maybe it's just me, but I heard something about yogurt and it looks delicious and it absolutely zhushed it up. This what I recipe, I, I, um, I, was, I was waiting for, mm, yeah. I heard something with yogurt, sorry. but we, we couldn't, sorry, we couldn't hear you properly. Yes, that's um, better. Oh, I'm sorry. What it is is I've changed <laughs> okay, the angle anyway. of the camera. But uh, make yogurt in your thermomix, and I would juice it up a bit by drizzling some yogurt on as well, and or making tzatziki out of that yogurt, and it would just add another mm. dimension to that. So Great thank idea. you for coming into my kitchen. It's been a pleasure. Yes. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. That was great. Um, I loved seeing all these, uh, the, these tips and tricks and everyone was sharing their knowledge about um, what, they're, what they're making with, their, with the dish. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, just want to say if you liked what you saw today. So this is how we do thermomix business at the moment. So as I said at the beginning, we can't come to anyone's kitchen, anyone home at the moment. So we're doing everything we do online now via Zoom, whether that's been um, workshops like here today or individual cooking experiences with you. Um, talk to your consultant if you want to see something in particular, whether that's baking, whether that's um, anything about salads or uh, a certain way of cooking, um, talk to them, they're happy to show you. And uh, we do run weekly cooking experiences um, anyway so talk to your consultant and we can make something that's of interest for you feedback's always welcome for those of you who were, uh, were not interested in seeing or getting a thermomix the tm6 obviously whether that's an upgrade to a previous model that you have or getting your first thermomix uh, on your kitchen bench feel free to um, reach out to your consultant again. I just quickly want to share one thing with you. Um, we do have an offer coming from September and that means when you join our team and do what we're doing here, become a consultant, you can reduce the price for your Thermomix significantly. And uh, maybe you have already shown interest about coming and uh, becoming a consultant. So you know that you have to do six sales in your 60 day program. We're going to reduce that to four sales only. So is that something of interest for you? Working with all these beautiful women that you oh, saw yeah. here to, uh, with me today, come and join our team. 
learn more about how to become a thermics consultant, um, cook at work <laughs> whilst you're cooking dinner for the family, all in the comfort of your own home. And um, if you would like to stay on today to learn a little bit more about what I was just sharing with you, I'm happy to stay on with you a little bit longer and we can have a chat. Um, other than that, I would like to say thank you so much for spending your Sunday afternoon with us. I hope you learned something new and I will love to welcome you back to our next cooking classes. We have uh, the next um, workshop is on next Saturday, that's the 15th of August, and it's modern Indian cooking. <laughs> you see me again, I'm gonna make a, a kid-friendly butter chicken, and um, we're going to pop the lid, uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> we're going to pop the link to the event. You're also gonna find it on Eventbrite, um, in uh, the Thermomix community, so uh, go in quickly and secure your seat there. We'd love to see you coming back and uh, share inspiration with you during this time and get you to make the most out of your thermal mix. All right, enough from me for today. <laughs> Thanks again and goodbye. See you soon. I'm just going to hang in here in case someone wants to have a quick chat with me.